Hey guys, this is Caspi with Tate, and today you join me for episode 35 of Road to Colonization. Now we start with another launch. That's just two launches after the launch I said was the last launch. But yeah, no, this is of course the uh, rover and crazy flying miner I devised to solve my small problem of putting my whole base on lathe on a hill, because I'm a really smart guy. I think things through real well. Uh, I didn't place the base particularly well, but the geography there, the landscape, it's so beautiful, so I'm more than happy to send up another little uh, um, set of supplies. So yes, uh, this will obviously go on into orbit on top of a new rocket, um, because, you know, why not develop a new rocket for probably the last launch of the series? Nope! The second last launch of the series. <laughs> yeah, who knows at this point? Um, but yes, this is pretty much the same as uh, my other vehicles that kind of have the payload in between all the rocket cores, but it's just all below. It's four cores, one in the middle and three on the outside, which make up this big rocket, and it hopefully will be reusable. Um, hopefully it will be able to land. I didn't bring any air brakes, though, so that was probably stupid. Uh, yeah. But yes, this was, of course, be heading out to lathe to do lots of cool stuff. Um, the rover especially. I really, I, I, I would have sent a rover the first time and it just kind of didn't cross my mind. But what's a base without a rover? I think all my bases have rovers. The one on Duna, the one on the moon. Yeah, I have a moon base I haven't used in a whole series because that was a road to exploration thing. But still, I have a moon base. Anyway, we decouple the fairing thing because if I actually eject the fairings while it's attached to the rocket, it would probably explode. Um, as you can see, a piece does actually explode there. Yeah, a bit of a janky vehicle, but uh, hey, it works. And then, yes, you can see we've got the rover and the transfer stage and the big dumb jet miner, which I love so much. But now we need to bring back this rocket before uh, anything else happens because it's extremely expensive. Um, so we shut down some of the engines. Uh, do our deorbit to burn, re-enter, uh, firing up our engines of course to stop ourselves from burning up because these have terrible drag to mass ratios so don't slow down very well and actually don't slow down really at all so I actually burn off all my fuel trying to get it slow enough for the parachutes to work and they don't so I just sort of hit the ground and lose about 600 grand so yeah, the space agency is going to be mad but this is not a reusable rocket I should have just used the other kind of Ones I've already been using, I don't really know what I was thinking. I just wanted to try something new, you know? Anyway, forgetting about that, that was a mostly successful <laughs> launch. I mean, it was a successful, su <clears throat> successful launch, just not a successful landing. But anyway, yes, like I said, we're on a uh, bop now. Um, just uh, We filled up our fuel shuttle for the second time. This needs to head back to orbit, put the rest of the fuel into the fuel shuttle so that can go back to lathe, so we can actually have some fuel on lathe, because we're pretty low on fuel over there. And uh, it would be nice to have some around. So yes, that is what this will be doing. Uh, so it's just going to push itself on into orbit extremely slowly because uh, it's using two nuclear engines. And even on BOP with this amount of fuel, that's not a lot of thrust to weight ratio. I'm glad it's enough. Like I, I think I did check before I built this, but if I hadn't, then it would very easily maybe not have been enough. Um, but anyway... Yes, uh, so we've got ourselves an apoapsis, and then we just push ourselves on into orbit, and we'll be able to head to the fuel shuttle, the other fuel shuttle. I've named them both fuel shuttle, but I think one's called BOP fuel shuttle, so it does distinguish them, but uh, yes, the fuel shuttle will meet the fuel shuttle. Um, maybe I could have just done this with one vehicle. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Well, no, actually, it's uh, better to have two, because uh, that, that means while the um, other one's heading back to lathe, this could, can still be bringing fuel up to the station. Also, this needs crew, and we wouldn't want to keep crew on the other shuttle all the time, because it does quite long missions going back to lathe. So it's just easy to do it like this. Um, anyway, so we get our encounter all laid in, and we'll be able to head on over there now, just tweak it a little bit, and here we are, just arriving at um, the fuel shuttle. I am cutting out most of the uh, maneuvering, just because, you know, it's episode 35 of season 2, you know what maneuvering looks like at this point, and uh, yeah, <laughs> and this, this does take a long time to get all of this fuel prepared. So yeah, um, anyway, yeah, we need to fill up the outer tank, so we haven't really brought much oxidizer with us, but uh, we have brought a bunch of liquid fuel, and we almost fill up the outer tanks, all but two, I think. Um, we even pump in most of the outer fuel in the uh, fuel shuttle, meaning that we only have about 800 units of, no, 400 units of fuel left in the shuttle for going back to Bob, which is more than enough, but yeah, we pretty much empty the fuel shuttle into that, but it's almost full. So we're going to have to do one more mining mission, but we would have had to do that anyway because we need to fill up the Concordia. 
So we're gonna go and do that now. Um, then run back up to the uh, round back up to the fuel shuttle. Put a little bit of fuel in the uh, fuel shuttle, and then go to the Concordia and fill that up. So yes, uh, we have to head back to Bob, obviously, to go and get that fuel. So another descent. Just uh, tweaking my uh, landing a little bit. It's nice landing on non-atmospheric worlds. Uh, you know, it's just so much easier to pinpoint your landing. You can see my process here of just kind of. Occasionally doing burns, just getting the retrograde marker over the little pink uh, opposite of the target marker. And you just kind of do this. Naturally, if you do it too well, you'll come down right on top of the vehicle. You want to come down right next to it, obviously. Unless you're landing on like a barge or something. I don't know. Anyway, um, so yes, just uh, coming down here. This is, of course, sped up to four times speed because it uh, does take a while to do these things. But yeah, uh, <laughs> you can see I'm just about getting it to land close because you need to be within about... I think you need to be within 25 meters to get the... Uh, Kerbal attachment system pipes to actually connect. So, yeah, we actually don't quite do that. I think I landed about 27 meters away, which means I have to move it a little bit, but that's not too much of a problem. But yes, we land softly, of course. It's pretty easy to land softly on BOP. It's a pretty small world. But then we need to move slightly over towards the minor, which just involves tilting the vehicle, hopefully not letting it fall over, because that's a pretty good way to strand yourself. You can see I tried to attach the pipe there. The Kerbal's already out, but um, it wasn't close enough. So I just move it and then we can link it up and start filling the fuel shuttle up with fuel which does take a little while and requires quite a bit of micromanagement. Uh, I should probably send another power unit out to this to um, give it enough power to actually mine fuel. Um, but eventually I uh, do get it all full up and uh, we can leave, yeah. Um, so yeah, uh, we're just going to head back into orbit so we get ourselves our apoapsis and then we get ourselves into orbit and this will be even more cut down because it's the third one of the same mission in two episodes and yeah we've got ourselves in our encounter pretty quickly and we'll meet it on the other well on this side of the orbit just next way around and here we are um you get a nice shot of lathe um shadowing jewel i do love scatterer so much it i love the eclipses especially around jewel it's crazy and then of course we dock we need to put about 800 units of fuel, a little less, I think, actually. No, not 800, like 1,600. No, 3,200. <laughs> a lot of fuel. Um, these, the size of the outside tanks kind of belie how much fuel they actually need. So we spent a while pumping the fuel into uh, into it. Take a little monopropellant from the um, shuttle to the other shuttle <laughs> so that we can uh, actually go and dock with the uh, station around Jewel, uh, around uh, Bop, so that we can give some fuel to the Concordia. And yeah, all is good. So the fuel shuttle entirely fueled up now. We go and find ourselves the, uh, go and find ourselves the, uh, the, the station around Bop, where we'll be depositing the fuel um, so that the Concordia can come and dock, because we don't have compatible docking ports with the uh, fuel shuttle and the Concordia, so that's a little annoying. So yeah, so we uh, are going to go and find that. We do our burn, and we do the things, and then uh, I think we just arrive. Yeah, here we are. <laughs> Um, and uh, we're going to go and dock to it. Uh, this is, of course, the uh, BOP fuel system. The station's important, so we can just keep fuel in orbit, and it also allows uh, things like the Concordia to uh, get fuel out of this, because the station actually has smaller docking ports on it. The fuel shuttle does not. Um, so yes, we dock a little hard, but all is good. And then we bring the Concordia in, and, uh, oh, magic, movie magic, it's here. <laughs> yeah, again, a lot of maneuvering. You know, you've seen a bunch of maneuvering already, so we just bring it in for a docking. And it looks uh, ah, looks rather nice bringing this big vehicle in. Although I have to say this used to be a big vehicle, but now it's smaller than pretty much all of the vehicles around uh, Jewel because, well, it was of an older time when we were just exploring things, not industrializing the solar system. But anyway, now it is time for the fuel shuttle to head home. Well, head to Lathe, which is its new home. Um, so yeah, it's heading home to Lathe. New home. Home away from home. Um, <laughs> so yes, we'll fire up the engines. Um, get ourselves our encounter, well, we actually won't get an encounter with Lathe straight away, we'll have to do some tweaks, but we'll get our, ap our periapsis around Jewel down to the uh, level of Lathe's orbit and all will be good. The burn takes a little while because it's fully loaded and it's just using nuclear engines. I kind of probably shouldn't have kept that Rockamax engine around, really, because it's just kind of dead weight now. I'm not going to use it, it would be too inefficient, so maybe we'll send an engineer to come and like, pull it off and just... I don't know, throw it into Lade's atmosphere or something. Um, and then a little later here we are just doing our, um, our inclination change because Bop is highly inclined relative to Lade, which makes me think maybe I should have put all of my mining operations on Pol, or maybe even Val. Uh, <laughs> maybe it was a little short-sighted, but hey, it, it works fine. We're going to get a bunch of fuel back there, so it's not too much of a problem. 
Um, and uh, yes, after a long burn, uh, uh, we do finish it off and get our encounter with Lathe. And then we will uh, go and encounter it, fly by and get ourselves into orbit, and then Lathe will be flush with fuel. It'll be all the fuel we'll need for probably like a few missions. Um, the, Concord, the Concordia is going to get fueled up itself, so uh, that's all good. Pretty much the only thing that's really going to need these fuel, this fuel is the planes, I reckon, and uh, maybe... Yeah, I mean, the the, canter, the the endurance, even, the big ship, uh, that's not really going to need any fuel. It's just a space station now. Um, but I guess maybe if they wanted to run away, I could do a bunch of these missions and fuel it up. But that would be uh, quite laborious. So that would take a really long time to fill up the uh, endurance in this manner. Um, so hopefully we'll never have to do that. Uh, but anyway... Yes, we do our, um, our, our orbital insertion. This actually takes two burns, but I will save you the quite a lot of time it takes to get in a nice circular orbit around Lathe. And we are here with quite a lot of fuel. Enough to continue our missions, no doubt. And talking of which, down on Lathe, uh, some of the Kerbals want to make sure the Nighthawk planes are capable of making orbit. And they're also uh, missing the endurance a little bit. They like the artificial gravity. Uh, apparently they... Uh, can't have natural gravity anymore, it doesn't taste right. Um, so, <laughs> that makes no sense, but okay, anyway. <laughs> anyway, Jeb gets in the plane, um, uh, another couple gets out of the side, turns out, yeah, that is upside down. <laughs> they were, yeah, this person's just really annoyed of sitting upside down their whole life. They want to get back to um, the endurance, where the artificial gravity ring is also the wrong way around, so you're always upside down in this mission. <laughs> anyway, we also get a fourth Kerbal out just to... Um, Pull off the uh, pull off the landing leg, um, and hopefully put it on the base. But I think it just falls off and explodes, which is no good. You can see how squirrely it is. What are you doing? Anyway, yeah. So uh, three of the cur three of the six Kerbals are going to head up to uh, the Endurance, so that actually mostly to balance life support, so that each base has an each base and ship has enough life support that they can survive long enough until the water miner gets here, so we can actually start producing life support. Um, so yeah. Anyway, so our three brave girls, Bill, no, um, Jeb, Bob, and other guy, um, get in the plane. Let it roll backwards um, so that we have as long takeoff as possible, because over that hill it's quite bumpy. So we roll back here, we throttle up the engines, and we get ready to go. Boldly go where lots of Kerbals have been before. Um, so yes, we throttle up and we start moving and go into four times time accelerate and speed on up the ridge. And hopefully we'll take off in time just about. And we do manage to take off before all this bumpy ground. And we get a beautiful shot of the hills and the valleys. I was, uh, when I was playing this, it was past 11. So my computer was in night mode so where it was slightly red. And this looks so amazing. I mean, it still looks pretty good, but if you have night mode setting on your computer, do that. This looks really incredible. I do love this landscape. It isn't where people usually land jewel bases. You want, you usually, um, lathe bases even. You usually want jewel in the sky. You want to be by the river. But I really, really do like this geography. It's so kind of... Ah, it's just so nice. I don't know. There's something I really like about it. There's a big pool over there. We'll have a big little lake over there. All the mountains and valleys. I have to say, it's quite nice. Anyway, the plane seems to be performing admirably. It seems lathe is a much nicer atmosphere. Uh, it was a much nicer climate for these um, for these planes. The engines burn for longer, actually. I don't know. Apparently, it's a salt atmosphere, but it works with air-breathing jets. So, I, I think that's bullshit, you know? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah, so the uh, jet engines burn for a long time. Uh, higher than they would on Kerbin, I don't really know why. And then eventually we will, of course, switch them to rocket mode and push ourselves in, on into orbit. And it looks like we're doing really well for fuel, actually. I think this makes it to orbit with about 550 units of fuel extra. So these actually would work as a method of shipping fuel down to the surface we could probably dispatch about like 400 units of liquid fuel every time which is pretty significant so if we needed to fuel up a base to move it or need to fuel up the um the water miner we can totally do that with the planes which is fantastic uh lathers really nice for this especially when you start five kilometers up it was planned it wasn't a massive mistake to land really high up on a mountain it, it was helpful for planes and fuel and <laughs> but yeah anyway no that is a really good thing that will help us uh fuel up all of the things but this has to go and meet up with the endurance so that the kerbals can go and live somewhere with at least fake gravity um I mean, it's not orga organic gravity, but it'll do. Um, I don't know why. <laughs> Stop trying to rescue the joke, Peter. Just let it go. <laughs> anyway, of course, after a bunch of maneuvering, we end up uh, near the 
beautiful endurance and actually this time managed to dock to it, unlike last time where I bounced off. And yes, you can see how big these planes are, even relative to the endurance, actually. And then funnily enough, back on Kerbin, um, we are also flying a Nighthawk 3, which is the Kerbin version of the plane you just saw. It doesn't have a cargo bay, but other than that, it's pretty much the same. And this is going up uh, to meet with the water miner. Here are just the main stages, of course. Uh, these take a while to do these launches, so we're just going to see the cliff notes. Um, here we're just getting up to speed and then switching over to uh, rocket mode so that it can push on into orbit and meet up with the uh, water miner, actually. Uh, we get our encounter pretty much straight away and then just do need to do a bit of a tweak here um, to actually encounter it so that we can go and rescue the Kerbal I accidentally sent up. Yes, that's why we're doing this. I accidentally put a Kerbal in the water miner and, yeah, we've got to go get her back because there isn't enough life support. There's a shit ton of water on it. But uh, apparently she needs to eat and breathe. What a... just... Such a hassle, these Kerbals. Um, so yeah, we need to go and get her out because uh, I apparently just didn't check. I was like, ah, pff, there probably won't be a Kerbal in here. Um, so yeah, she just really wanted her to go to Jewel and we were like, no, you are now head of Kerbin Operations. Which according to Penguin's new series isn't the best thing to be. Apparently it goes a bit tits up on Kerbin. You should go watch Penguin's new series. He's doing a career mode and with this crazy awesome planet pack. It's amazing. Why are you even, no, do finish this video and then go watch that. And, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so it's time to uh, deal with the plane now and uh, go head back, hopefully not burn up, and land at sea level, which is much nicer than landing at lathe base. So this Kerbal should be happy that she's on Kerbin. Um, anyway, yes, so we actually come in a little short after burning off most of our velocity high in the atmosphere. So at about uh, 20 kilometers, we fire up the engines um, so that we don't lose all our speed and can carry on to the runway, which we do. We pass over the mountains and then start pulling, uh, trying to burn off all of our velocity. Still burning quite hot um, because I didn't give up a lot of speed so that I can get here as quickly as possible. Um, and yeah, we're going to go and land on the runway, hopefully. It's not the fully upgraded runway. After all these episodes, the KSC is really not very upgraded, because you just don't really need it. I mean, the runway's fine, the VAB and launch... the launch pad's fully upgraded, that's really important. Um, the VAB isn't, though, so I still don't have full action groups, funnily enough. Um, but anyway, it doesn't matter too much, and uh, we're going to go and land um, on the runway now. Uh, the cockpit finally stops glowing from the re-entry, and uh, all is good. And uh, the final landing, hopefully, of uh, this series, although probably not, because we're also going to land on lathe again. But still, the final landing at the KSC. Oh, oh, oh sad. Anyway, <laughs> although I've said that before, so who, who knows at this point. Um, but yes, uh, the Kerbal is safely home. Probably rather happy, given that she actually spent 150 days up in that water miner. It's been a little while, but now it's time to head to uh, Jewel, so I had to go and get her. I was like, fuck, why? Oh, I'm such an idiot. Anyway. Uh, so we've set up our encounter with Jewel, uh, with the water miner and the rover, and uh, now we're just doing the burn, of course, uh, with the big engine, because on all of my transfer stages I always put a big liquid fuel and oxidizer engine, just to save me time, because I'm lazy and <laughs> waste money, apparently. Um, of course, that does eventually burn out, making this uh, burn take a little while. You can see it's burned out now. Um, but yeah, uh, eventually we do get through the burn and pretty much nail it. We get our encounter straight away. We'll have to do a bit of a plane change, of course, to uh, get ourselves a, a nice trajectory around Jewel um, so that we, well, can go and meet up with Lathe. Um, this is a little light on Delta V, actually. I think I just brought a little too little. I should have brought four kilometers instead of three kilometers. But it'll be fine. If it, gets, if it stalls in orbit of Jewel, we can just go and rescue it. Um, it has a docking port. And then, of course, there's this, which is also... Um, which is our, supp uh, our supplies, um, which is just some life support and some fuel, mostly just for the lathe base, the f that's what the fuel's for at least. The life support is of course for the new endurance, because that's going to be running pretty low on life support in the th three years it'll take us to get there. But uh, I think all of the uh, ships have at least six years of life support left, so we're good-ish. Uh, <laughs> yeah, but uh, these are of course the final tweaks to the base, because I didn't do a great job of planning all of the things, despite all of my planning. So yeah, anyway, eventually though, we, uh, well, we almost completed the burn now, and this will also reach Jewel in about three years. 
and it'll all be ready for next episode. But yeah, so I hope you've enjoyed this episode. A bit more mining, a bit more fueling, a little bit more, well, some nice lathe imagery. That was pretty nice. Um, seriously, that lathe flight, go and watch it with night mode turned on on your PC and like it pretty red. I was like, wow, this looks beautiful, and then turned it off and was like, wow, the colors aren't as nice. But still, I think that's pretty cool. I think lathe look ni looks nice enough even in normal computer mode. Anyway, yes, also we have to go and do our tweaking and things, get nice and close to Jewel so that we can orbit lathe, go up, reach lathe and all of that kind of stuff. But anyway, um, I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, this has been episode 35 of Road to Colonization, and I will see you next time. <laughs>